Hey everyone, this is Decker from Enigmatic Devices, and this video is the story about a truly weird device, the Hieronymus Symbolic Machine. Some people claim what this device can do is amazing, yet it doesn't have parts. Yep, you heard that right. Check out this video to hear the full story. And if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Okay, here we go. You encounter them every day, but have you ever stopped to think about what makes a machine a machine? Merriam-Webster defines a machine as a mechanically, electrically, or electronically operated device for performing a task. But consider for a moment a device that has no parts or power source and whose function is defined with just lines and symbols. If it somehow amazingly and miraculously manages to work, can it still be considered a machine? This is the odd story of just such a device. To understand the symbolic Hieronymus machine, you first need to know the origin story, a patented device of the same name that was not symbolic at all. And here's where we meet Dr. Thomas Gallen Hieronymus. His invention was an electronic device intended for the detection and analysis of minerals using a phenomenon he called eloptic radiation. Aptly named the Hieronymus machine, he was granted an actual patent in 1949. Parts included a simple pickup coil, an optical prism, an amplifier circuit, and a touch-sensitive output device. To operate the device, you would simply place an object, such as a mineral, by the pickup coil so that the eloptic radiation could flow through the circuit and be amplified by the prism. Using a combination of a touch-sensitive plate and a tuning knob, you would then adjust the device for the sample. Now, with a known value or rate, it becomes possible to find out if that same mineral is present in future samples. Dr. Hieronymus believed that all matter gives off this eloptic radiation, that it resonates at different rates depending on the material, and that his device could be tuned to detect that rate. Obviously, there is no supporting evidence for this form of radiation. In fact, the machine doesn't even operate by any known principles of physics. However, users have nonetheless claimed success with being able to consistently figure out the mineral composition of unknown objects placed by the device. Now, if that's not strange enough, here's where the story really gets weird. Enter John W. Campbell Jr., editor of Astounding Science Fiction, science fiction magazine published under a variety of titles since 1930. He was a fan of the device, and he published an illustrated set of articles in 1956 explaining its construction and usage. It was at this time, while testing the device with a volunteer, that he made an accidental yet crazy discovery. During one experiment, he found that the Hieronymus machine appeared to work perfectly fine, even though he'd forgotten to plug it into a power outlet. That's right. Amazingly, with no power, the Hieronymus machine still managed to produce results. In repeated tests, he found that some users were still able to correctly identify the mineral type of unknown samples that were placed by the device. Campbell put together a theory that it was not the physical components of the device that made it work, but rather the symbolic relationships of the parts with each other. He believed that it was the influence of the user's mind using some form of psychic force that was the secret behind the device. After a ton of testing, in the August 1956 edition of Astounding Science Fiction, he had this to say about the device. The device works well, repeatedly, and predictably for many individuals, but it works just as well when it's not plugged in into the power supply as when it is. And to prove this theory, he created a copy of the device that was entirely symbolic, using nothing but a schematic drawn in India ink to represent the parts of an actual Hieronymus machine. Amazingly, while testing, he saw the same positive results as the real device. Over time, Many people have built their own versions of the symbolic Hieronymus machine and have claimed similar success in seeing an effect. If you would like to build one, check out the links in the description of this video. So if this is all true, how could this be possible? Well, I would put this phenomenon firmly in the dowsing rod category. For hundreds of years, people have claimed success dowsing for assorted objects and materials. And if there's an effect, it's certainly not the magic of simple bent metal rods. Perhaps operator intention, or psi, is the driving force behind how dowsing works and Campbell's claims about the Hieronymus machine. 
Campbell touched on this in an article he published in February 1957 in the Astounding Science Fiction magazine. He said, I can't defend or even describe the process by which I arrived at a hunch. These things depend on relationship as a thing itself. He also wrote, The daring generalization here is that symbols and their relationships have a definite physical effect upon human beings. Let me ask you, is it that far-fetched to believe that symbols alone have the power to influence people? Some believe that at a very deep level that reality itself is just a set of connected and self-referencing symbols. We attach meaning based on the spectrum of reality that we can actually perceive with our senses, and then we codify it. And this abstraction means that we're not entirely objective, and at times we're not even aware of our perceptions at a conscious level. Campbell was convinced that his symbolic device worked. He was also sure that whatever the process was that made it work was not based on physical science. So this brings us back full circle. Is the symbolic Huronymus machine really a machine at all? Now remember, by definition, a machine is mechanically, electrically, and electronically operated and performs a task. A simple lever can be considered a machine just as much as a quantum computer. Perhaps in this case, the lever is the relationship between the symbolic components and the operator's intention. And the task is the manifestation of that intention, which is to identify the unknown sample. Maybe Campbell had it right. But not everyone agrees, and certainly not Dr. Hieronymus himself. He's quoted as saying, I appreciate Mr. Campbell's interest in my work, but over the years since then, I have concluded that he set back the acceptance of my work by his continual emphasis on what he termed the supernatural or magical aspects. After all this, I'm not sure where I land with Mr. Campbell's claims, but one thing is for certain, and that is that the symbolic machine is super easy to build. Check out the links in the description of this video for how to try this out. Perhaps you too might find your perception of machines change forever. And that's it for this video. This is Decker. And if you like this content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out all my other videos.